something big happened in the Harvey Weinstein case that we have got to spend a moment on. And that is our good friend, Arthur Idala, Mark, went all the way up to New York's highest court, yes. the Court of Appeals, on Valentine's mm-hmm. Day while you and I were wooing our loved ones. And he was trying to woo the judges on New York's highest court into throwing out the conviction of Harvey Weinstein that got him 23 years in jail where he sits right now. He also was sentenced to 16 years in jail out in Los Angeles. So if Arthur wins his case, it doesn't mean that Harvey is free, but it certainly improves his lot in life. Um, And Arthur, your argument boiled down, we'll keep it simple for the audience, but it boiled down to the fact that in New York, in this trial, they allowed other women who were not the actual accusers in this criminal case to take the stand and say, me too. He's a jerk, he's a bad guy, and me too. And that in addition to that, if Harvey had taken the witness stand in his own defense, they would have allowed like two dozen women to come forward saying what a scumbag he was to them. And he would have been fighting all these extraneous other battles as opposed to the ones at hand, because New York has a law that allows these like prior bad acts in a way that's very favorable to the prosecution. So you were arguing though that Molyneux, and there's another case, Sandoval, that they're, that they, these are not fair and that they ruined his uh, chances at a fair trial. And amazingly, because you lost that appeal five to zero at the, the lower appellate court, but then the court of appeals took the case which was very promising for you that they, you know, they could have just rejected it and said, hey, let the lower ruling stand. So I just want to show the audience a little bit. Here's, you know, some of the descriptions are like, they they struggled with it. Like nobody was saying, Idala's going to lose, that Harvey's going to lose. They were like, "Mm, the Court of Appeals seems divided. And I want to show the audience a little bit of one of the judges who seems to be on the side of of, um, the prosecution trying to get after you and how you handled it. This is fun. This is Judge Madeline Singus, uh, SOT 17. The jury has a right to know that when these women are put into that position, that he has done this time and time again, and he knows this isn't a consensual situation because he knows these other women haven't consented to that and have run out. And amongst all the power plays of his power in Hollywood, his power over their careers, there has to be a different assessment. You reject that? I reject the fact that you think, with all due respect, Your Honor, and, and that, that's been the problem with his case in the lower court and at the appellate division, because, because he's an executive and who became the poster boy for a, a movement, there's a different standard. I didn't say anything the, about a movement. I know you didn't, Your Honor, but the bottom line is that the, it was so obvious that the jury did not need help figuring out his intent. We could talk about, was, would I have been able to bring in the 30 other relationships where there was quid pro quo, where he did have sexual relations consensually? Would I have been able to do that? Of course not. But they're saying between the decade between Jessica Mann and Mimi Halle, these other four people he had negative interactions with. What about the 40 that he had positive interactions with? Hmm. Well not done. Boy. Not boy, it's Arthur. A, and, right. and the chocolate and the flowers didn't hurt on Valentine's Day. That you <laughs> I, say, I say, actually, what people remarked at, Megan, was at the end of the day, they put this argument on the end of the day. So it was like, by the time it ended, it was like six o'clock at night. And I was the last to speak. I got rebuttal time. And literally, as, I, as I'm walking away from the podium, I said, oh, and by the way, happy Valentine's Day, your honors. Mm. And my partner, Barry Cabot, just shook his head. He goes, only you would say that. And Judge Sickens, who was clearly the one most against us, she gave me the biggest smile. You know, I know her personally. She was the Nassau County District Attorney. um, And she was definitely the one who was against us. But I will tell you, they were pretty hard on the prosecutor as well. I wasn't sure which clip you were going to run. Well, we we have stand by. We have some of that. We have some of that. You say what you're going to say, and then I'll show the audience what you're talking about. No, no, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. I want to see so the prosecutor, this guy is from the Manhattan DA's office. His name is Stephen Harvard Rube. and Yale. Harvard, Harvard and Yale. Yale. And you're going to see a clip here. It's Judge Jenny Rivera, who appears to question whether these other witnesses are needed in this case in order to establish some unique pattern of events. She's like, what's so unique about a guy like this trying to exploit his power? And uh, here's a bit of that in SOT 18. 
Hey, What's unique me? about a powerful man trying to get a woman it, to have it, sex it, with them? It, it doesn't have to be unique. It just has to be distinctive. And what the Molyneux witnesses showed was that mm -hmm. defendant knew from these past experiences that just because an aspiring actress was willing to accept favors from him, ask favors, and even voluntarily go up to his room by themselves, right, by themselves to his private space, that did not mean they were consenting to sexual activity. That's why what the Molyneux witnesses Why isn't it just the opposite? If they're not willing to do it, but someone else is willing to do it, it must mean that it's consensual. Well, Why does it establish the absolute opposite of your argument? Well, well I, I guess what I'd say is this. I, sure, there is a response to the Molyneux evidence. There's a way of rebutting it. But Molyneux evidence doesn't have to be dispositive to be admitted. It just has to be probative to a material element. All right, that's kind of hard to follow, Arthur. But what, what is she saying? What's the judge trying to say there? Well, what the judge is trying to say is just because Harvey Weinstein was rejected by one woman, that does not mean every other woman, woman is going to have the same exact reaction. And that was my point is that, you know, he married two beautiful women. They gladly, they happily married him. He had plenty consensual girlfriends. They tried to introduce women who rejected him under the premise that, see, these women who he's not charged with, they rejected him. So it must be true but the women who he's charged with rejected him as well. And that yeah. just demeans women. And that's what I told that to the judges. I mean, what, all women react exactly the same way? Of yeah. course not. But, Megan, it also had to do with the sheer numbers. Molino evidence can come in often for identification purposes, et cetera. But they have if three charged people and they'll have one Molino witness. Here, they were three charged people. They had four for Marlon Owens. They were more women who testified against him who never went, who was never charged with, never went in front of a grand jury than with the women who he was actually charged with. And the clip I was wondering whether you were going to show was regarding the Sandoval. That means- Wait, I have that too. Stand by. I've got that too. <laughs> so this is all along the same lines of like, how many women are we going to allow to take the stand? We could be here for years We're just going through Harvey Weinstein's love life, which was, like, you know, a threat looming over you thanks to these two rulings. And the prosecution got pressed pretty hard on, like, are we really effectively depriving these accused guys of their right to take the stand if we allow all this other stuff in? I think this is the site you're referring to. It's Judge, Be Judge Betsy Barros to Stephen Wu in SOT 19. He never disputed that these events occurred, but said that they were consensual and the woman right. were lying you, by claiming otherwise. You, you keep talking about as if he testified. He didn't testify, right? So it's one person's word against the other, and now he can't testify. Am I correct? This Sandoval ruling, I don't think anybody in their right mind would testify. So how is this a fair trial? The point is not that the case is weak, but rather that it doesn't fit within that narrow band of cases like Vargas, like McKinney, where the act is so unequivocal, so unequivocal, that there's no need to bring in additional evidence. All right, what was, I understood why the judge's point. I didn't understand Wu's response there. What, what, how is he defending against the litany of other charges and other women who he would have liked to have taken the stand? Well, they keep using the word that it was so unique. It was so like, because he would like tell them, come up to my room and I'll let you read a script. And then he would try to or allegedly did fool around with them. So he was, oh, this is so unique, so unique. And my answer was, if, it's, if this whole thing was so unique, why is this whole thing called Me Too? Because it kept it happened to a lot of people, and there are a lot of situations, a lot of men, a lot of women. So they were trying to say the jury needed this evidence because it was so outside of their ability to understand this. They needed all these other women mm. to come in. But what Judge Barros was saying, and look, just to give you background, Judge Barros was a district attorney, assistant DA, a chief DA. She was a head uh, of a uh, she was the trial judge. She only did criminal work, so she knows how outrageous this decision is this this because you want to talk about the constitution we want defendants to have the ability to testify typically when someone does not have a criminal record you don't bring up any of their bad acts here harvey weinstein didn't have a criminal record they wanted they asked the judge to bring up like 60 bad acts and he said no i'm only gonna let you bring up 32 bad acts and that's what they said she said how could this be a fair trial when it's a he said she said case and you took the he said out of the equation and you added more she said she said she said that he wasn't even charged with. So we are waiting, honestly, on pins and needles. I will tell you now that we found out last week 
the next decisions from the Court of Appeals will be April 18th, which is a Thursday. And then the one after that is April 23rd, which I believe is a Tuesday. Um, and that's when we're going to find out. And as you said, it's there's not going to be a picture like there was of Bill Cosby when walking out of prison. He still has to face the uh, the counts in of Los Angeles. But the truth, Megan, is this case wasn't about Harvey Weinstein. And that's how I ended it. This is about every criminal defendant. The case is already being cited all throughout the state of New York, from Buffalo to Brooklyn, saying, oh, no, no, we're allowed to let this in. It's people v. Weinstein, people v. Weinstein. All, all these other witnesses can testify against these people. It's people v. Weinstein. If he takes the stand or she takes the stand, we can let all this stuff come in. It's people v. Weinstein. And if we get a reversal, it is not going to be that the Court of Appeals is looking to help Harvey Weinstein. With cyber attacks on the rise, protecting your data security is more important than ever. So why is Congress considering a bill that could put your credit card data at greater risk of being hacked and exposed to foreign networks? Our advertiser, the Electronic Payments Coalition, says the Durbin Marshall credit card bill shifts billions in consumer spending to less secure payment networks, all so that corporate megastores can make bigger profits. Find out more about the issue at electronicpaymentscoalition.org. And decide for yourself if you would like to tell your senators to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.